Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'll show you how I made this little red hooded cape. I start off by preparing my fabric, a red felted wool. This project has been in the making for a while now. I gave up on it, but now when spring is in there, I finally felt motivated enough to continue. So this part was filmed over a year ago. I don't remember much about my thought process here, but I think I was trying to make some uh, vague shapes resembling the different historical cape patterns I had seen. I also seem to be using the same method as I use for my skirts. I uh, really thought I could just use it for everything, huh? My fabric is folded and I've made two front and three back panels. And here I'm making smaller shapes for the little capelet thingy. Then I had an enormous amount of footage of me cutting out pieces, so enjoy. Then I started on the lining, which is an old curtain. I simply used my main fabric as a pattern. Please enjoy past me placing camera for yet another scissor shot. I did at least remember to remove what looks like 4 centimeters from the hem of the lining. For the capelet, I used a nicer damask that matched the red of my fashion fabric. And by the looks of it, barely remember to remove what is probably 2 centimeters. The side seams are pinned and then sewed together on my machine. Using a base pattern, I draw out my neck hole. And luckily remembered seam allowances. Past me then pinned and stitched together the bottom of the capelet. New day, if I am to go buy the socks. Here I'm measuring and marking where my armholes are going to be. Here is a taste of the music I was listening to. <laughs> I, I think it might have been December.
After the side seams were done, I made facing for the arm openings. Edge of the fabric strips were folded under and stitched down clumsily on my machine. There are better ways to do this and uh, prettier ways, but uh, but thinking is difficult sometimes. It's also a lot more work to edit when I don't pause the camera between shots, but I guess I was in the mood, and at that point the camera is just along for the ride, and later I have to hope that I caught the important stuff. Then my fabulous past self took the time to make pockets. I measured out where I wanted them to be. And inserted them into the lining. Unfortunately the squares weren't the same length and width so the pattern didn't end up matching with the lining in the end. I then finished up the final side seams and draped it on my mannequin to test the fit. For some absurd reason it was way off! It looks like I tried to drape it to adjust the fit, but eventually I just made some extreme darts in the existing seams. Okay, this I remember, those scraps were the exact size as the darts, so I used them as a guide on the shell of the coach. The front of the lining fabric was cut away to make a facing. I also even the hem. Then the fashion fabric was sewn to the lining right sides together and the seam allowances was secured with a top stitch. Bag linings seem safer and easier to make but I think the cape would have been more structural but also more um, flowy. It would, have, it, it would have had a nicer drape, that's it, um, if it had been flat lined instead. I think I did these corners almost right, until I did this. I just cut away way too much, luckily this fabric doesn't fray. So here we are again, in more current times, finally finishing this garment. And I start by finishing the armholes. This was done with a simple whip stitch. Unfortunately, I hadn't shown you the fit yet, but here I am unpicking the dots and sewing them up again just a little bit wider.
Okay, so I don't know yet how much I've filmed of the actual cloak and how <laughs> much footage I have of it. So this is after I've fixed this, the, 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 the shoulder situation. As you can see, it's still gapping and I need to fix this area. This part is too high and it doesn't really... It, it, it doesn't hang exactly the way I want it to, but I'm gonna show what it looks like with the little cape thing that I have. Okay, so this is what it looks like. A bit priest-like or Spanish Inquisition or something. This is the only part that is actively similar to a historical pattern and it's the part that I don't really like. It, it looks... <sighs> yeah. But I don't like how it's in the front. I think it's too short. It should be maybe a bit more volume in it. It just looks kind of plain. It looks like a little capelet or whatever you call it. Which I guess it technically is, but I just don't... I don't know. The main cape itself is gonna have a small standing collar, just so it, it don't, won't be in the way of this thing. Uh, because I will probably be embarrassed to wear this in real life, so I'm gonna make it possible for me to take it off, but I also wanted to have a hood. I haven't been able to find a proper pattern for a hood. Like, I know I've seen it, but it's rare and it's usually for children or like something you can wear with a whale where you're, when you're in mourning or in Mexico. Overall, I don't think it's too bad. It's just so much work that I have to do to just fix mistakes that I could have avoided making. We'll see. Indeed, we shall. First, I go ahead and use my base pattern again and mark my neckline. Then I do some advanced piecing. This was attached with a minimal prick stitch. This is my go-to stitch. It's fast and sloppy, but it's supposed to look that way and it always ends up looking good. Still difficult to say several times in the row though. Prick stitch, prick, prick, prick stitch. And the same thing was repeated on the lining, on the hair I was using the even faster whip stitch. Okay then, this is the result of my patching. Overall, I think the piecing itself looks kind of charming. I don't mind it. Uh, the fit of this is still weird. Uh, I'm gonna have to try it on and see if it's just because of the mannequin that it looks like this, or if it's just my pattern being weird because I think preferably I would have to put a dart here somewhere which wouldn't be too much work it would just look a bit weird this is where I drew that my neckline would be which looks accurate when I have it on the mannequin 
Uh, same with the back here, it looks accurate. Uh, but that also means that there is nothing I can actually cut away from this. So I might have made them a tiny bit too short. Like this is the seam allowance I have to work with here. First of all, I'm going to try it on and then cut away some of the excess, measure out a neckline for this so that I could make the collar. And that's the next step. Almost done. Uh, you heard me. That's what I did. The collar was just two pieces of fabric sewn together and then stitched to the cape. I'm making a double breasted closure for my cape and here I'm adjusting the front so that it curves along the collar when it's closed. I clipped into the seam allowance and folded the lining over the raw edges, and the inside of the collar was done up with whip stitches. Now this part was intentional, it's common to leave some extra lining fabric in the back of coats to ease the fit. And here I'm finishing those corners of the hem that I messed up earlier. I then proceeded to sew wide prick stitches along the front and the collar of the cape. This was for decoration as well as stitching down the seam allowances. Then I decided on these big metal buttons. I measured out where to put them and stitched the buttonholes by hand. And with the final button done, that finishes up the cape itself. Now for the capelet. Okay, so I have this anorak pattern. The way that anorak hoods are structured is that it continues down into the front of the jacket. All of this is part of the hood itself. 
because I wanted to make the cape have more fabric in it instead of cutting out the hood and then an extra tiny little piece for the cape. I'm just gonna make it all into one piece. It's probably not gonna work as well as I hope it will, but that's my idea with this. So I have just the hood. No. I have the cape here just to see approximately the length I need and this is what the pattern looks like. This piece is for a button stand thing. So I'm just going to fold it away and pretend it doesn't exist and hope it's okay with that. And then I'm just going to cut out the hood and a little strip of fabric right here. And I guess we'll just see what it looks like in the end. I cut out the lining first and then completely forgot what I was doing when moving over to the ball. Pretend! Oh, this didn't happen. So, when it comes to the facing, I can choose to either just add some extra wool and then it will be folded in like this and that will look nice and decent and proper and all that but I think I might have, let me just check, this, which is full of hair. Um, is it a good match? Okay, scrap that. We're gonna have wool, line it with wool and I want there to be Like that, it's probably like seven centimeters. I sew the center back of the hood first, and here I'm pinning it to the capelet. I'm not entirely certain about the shape of it, it's very square, but from the few patterns that I've been able to find, yes, they were meant for children, they are basically just a square. It's two square pieces sewn together that makes a hood. It's not like it's not the correct shape, it, it just looks kind of weird to me. Why is it white? Oh, you're blinded, sorry. The two pieces were sewn together, leaving a hole to turn it inside out. Admittedly, it's a bit silly to leave the opening on the outside, but the wool fabric is so forgiving to work with. Okay, so I've already turned this inside out again, and I've tried it on and it looks okay. Uh, the only part I needed to adjust was the very front. Uh, it dipped down too much, so I've removed another one and a half centimeters to hopefully make it curve along the, well, the curve. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is cut away all of the excess and clip into the seams and then iron and turn it out. I also sewed prick stitches around the entirety of the hood and capelet. And the opening was closed with a ladder stitch.
I marked where I wanted the closure to be and sewed two buttonholes at the neck. The hood is then fastened to the buttons of the cape. And that's it for this project. Thank you for following along and good luck with your own adventures. Until next time.